So here's how to make a basic spinner using Onshape. Onshape.com. You'll have to go there first and create your own account and then you'll get into the program. I'm already in the program and I've already created one and I wanted to show you basically what it's going to look like kind of. Each of these holes I measured the typical standard bearings are 22 millimeters in diameter. I made these holes 22.4 millimeters in diameter because the hole has to be just slightly larger than the bearing so that it can actually fit in there. So if you're planning to use nickels or, or washers or something else, you need to measure those first. Okay. So this is kind of the basic one and what it's going to look like. So when you get to on shape, if if it's not already clicked, it probably is going to look like this. And this shows the different projects, some of the different projects that I've done. To create a new one, you click here, create, and you can give it a name. Um, you can just call it spinner. Um, three hole spinner that's fine it's going to create a public document because we're using the free version so you just that's the only choice you have you click create public document and it opens up a blank workspace for you okay now this should look very similar to fusion 360 or sketchup or inventor or SolidWorks. Okay, they're they're very similar programs, a little different each one, but a lot of similarities. First thing I'm going to do is click over here on top. So it's going to turn this so I'm looking at my top view. Okay, and I'm going to go here because I want to sketch. So I'm going to click sketch. And it's going to say, okay, right here it says select a plane I want to sketch on. Okay, well I already clicked top and I can click anywhere in here, just don't click on the lines. Clicks here. And then it says, okay, that's the plane I want to start sketching on. Okay, and you notice as soon as you're in sketch mode, these tools up here changed. Okay, there are three different kinds of circles, and you can use different ones depending on what you're doing. I'm just going to use this first one, and you'll notice right here the, um, the shortcut is a C. So I'm going to click here, and you can tell when it's selected because it turns a little bit blue, darker blue. So I'm going to pick a circle. I'm going to start in the center, click drag and click. You know what we need to do before we do this? I'm going to undo this. Here is the undo tool. If you make a mistake you can click there. First thing we need to do that I forgot is we need to click here and make sure our units are in millimeters. Now I've already changed mine. Yours is probably in inches. You need to go to millimeters because the 3D printer works in millimeters and we're measuring everything in millimeters. And then just click the green check mark. That means, okay, I like that setting. Okay, now I'm going to click on the circle again. I'm going to click, drag, and it doesn't matter what the number is right now. I'm going to click and click again there. Now this is available for me to type. So remember I said the, the, um, the diameter of the bearing is 22 millimeters. So I'm going to put 22.4 and press enter. Now it's the right the right size. Now to zoom in, I can use my scroll wheel. Okay, and it, it zooms to wherever my cursor is. So my cursor is here, and I roll. It's going to zoom into there. Okay, so if you want to you want to put your cursor right kind of where I want to zoom here because I want to work up from here. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into there. So we go now. I need some space around. This is going to be the size of the hole, so I need some space around it. So I'm going to make another circle. Oops, I just deselected it. See that? Click once, it selects. Click again, it deselects. And I need at least, I'm going to say I need at least three millimeters, probably four millimeters of a border around here. So I'm going to click on the outside of here. This one is 22.4. So I'm going to add four millimeters to this. So I'm going to add 4 to that, so that's 26.4. So I'm going to type 26.4, enter. There's my border. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing up here. I'm still in my circle tool. 
and you can see when I get on the line, see how that turns orange and it, you can see the little dotted line. I'm going to make another one up here. I'm going to do the size of the bearing, 22.4, enter. And I'm going to do another one that is 20, and click again, and do 26.4, and enter. Okay. Now if I hit Escape, I have my selection tool. You see my little arrow there? I can select. And when I'm in my selection tool, I can select the center of this, and I can slide this up. If I want a bigger spinner, I can move it up. But most of us want kind of a small one, so I can make it so they're touching. I can even make it overlap. I'm going to just make it so it's just about touching. Maybe not quite, but close. Okay. Now what happens if I make a mistake and I want to change this? Up here is my dimension tool, or D for dimension. If I click, now I can move this a little bit if I want. I can move these wherever I want to make them look pretty. <laughs> or if I change my mind, I can click on it twice and then I can enter you know, 35. I want that 35. Well, I don't really want it 35, but I can click 22.4. Okay, so that's the dimension tool. Okay, now I've done the basic stuff. Now here's the cool part with a program like this. Right now, up here, see how this says linear pattern? Well, we don't want linear pattern. If I click on this arrow, it gives me a circular pattern, which is pretty cool. So the circular pattern says, okay, what do you want to make a circular pattern out of? Well, I want to do these two. I'm going to click on this one, and I'm going to click on this one. And you notice, see the times three right here? The default is times three. So it automatically divided this 360 degrees into three and put those circles that I selected in here. If I click on this twice, I could put 10 if I want and press enter. There's 10. Okay, I don't think I want 10, but you know, you could put, some people put four and it looks pretty cool. I've made some where I have five, it looks pretty cool. Okay, um, some people do two. A lot of people do two, okay? I'm gonna do three. And when I move away from there, I can move this also. When I move away, see how that you see a little picture of the mouse with a little green checkbox there? That means to set this and, and tell the computer this is what I want, I have to left click. Now it's set. Okay. Now I'm going to use the arc tool, or I can use a line tool. I can do all kinds of things. I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to use the arc tool. I'm going to click somewhere here, somewhere here, and somewhere here. Okay. And when I use my circular pattern, click this, it's going to put three of them there. See one there. It took this and duplicated it to here and here. I press the, the right, the left click arrow on my mouse. There it is. If I don't like that, I can undo. I could use my line tool. I could go from here to here to here to here to here. I don't know, that looks kind of dumb, but I could do that. Oh, and now it still wants me to make more lines. If I'm still in the line tool and I'm done making lines, I click Escape. It'll get me out of that tool. Okay, let's do another circular pattern. Let's say I like this. Click here, click here, click. See, I'm highlighting the part I want to make circle. And it's on three, and I click. And there's my pattern, you know. That's kind of a dumb one, but... You can do whatever you want. Last little thing I want to show you before we finish this, I'm just undoing that, is my line tool, I can do construction. You see this one? A construction line is a line that just helps me line things up. So I can also do something like this, go through that middle portion, and now I know that's, I'm still in the, the line tool, wants me to make more lines, so I'm going to hit escape to get out of it. So I've got a line here and a line here. So I can get my arc tool out, and I can try to measure, you know, an equal distance above this, an equal distance above that, and then use that. And now my arc is centered, and these construction lines won't show up at all. Okay, so let's do that circular pattern. Let's click on my arc. 
it's already says three. I'm going to right click on it, it's done. Okay, so that's my basic pattern. Now I need to delete some lines. So I'm going to get the trim tool, which is the scissors, and I'm going to delete that line. Delete anything I don't want. Now I don't need this big circle here, and I don't need these. I can delete my I can delete my construction lines if I want to, it doesn't matter. The construction lines aren't part of my project, they're just to help me line things up. If I click on this cube over here and click one of these, any three are about the same, it turns it sideways. I'll zoom in a little bit. And I'm done with that. That's about what it's going to look like. So I'm going to click Done. Now this menu bar changed. Now I'm going to extrude this. This tool right here is the extrude. Click on there. I'm going to extrude this 7 millimeters because the bearings are 7 millimeters thick. Press Tab to set that in place. Click here. And that's going to extrude it. Click OK. I'll click the green arrow for OK. I'm going to click right now Command, right click, and I can turn this a little bit to see what it looks like. Or I can use this to do this, and it goes there. Okay, now I'm going to do one more little thing. This is called the Fillet tool. I'll click on the Fillet. It shows 25, which is kind of big. So that that's kind of doesn't well that maybe could be cool. I'm going to change this to 1.5. Press Tab to kind of set that in place, and I'm going to click around the edge here, the top edge. You notice it turns red because for some reason it doesn't like that. But if I follow it and click on the next one, then it then it says, oh okay, I can do that. Follow around, click on the outer edge. Follow around, click on there around there. Okay, and that, I'm holding command, right click, I'm turning it. See how that made that? I'm going to click OK. Oh, I did that one too by mistake. So I'm gonna, that's the top. I'll do the bottom also with the fillet tool. 1.5. Press tab to set that in place. Click. Go around the whole thing. I already did that one. Click OK. There's your basic uh, spinner. Now I would hope you guys wouldn't follow this exactly because then we're all going to look the same. I'd hope you kind of would design your own. Now down here is the part name. This is called the part studio. I'm going to right click on there. I can rename it. So I can call this uh, Papke Green Spinner. That way I'll know what color you want and everything. Press enter. Right click on there again and export. Export. This will have the name. You can change it here if you want also. This, I'm not sure what this will say when you first open it. I've already changed mine to STL so it's there. But yours might say something else. So you have to click on format and change that to STL. You can leave everything else alone. This should be millimeters. And you click OK. And it's going to download it. And you can see it downloaded right to here. So when you click on that, show in Finder, there's your spinner. That was my practice one right there. So then you can email me this file.